Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com, and today we are going to finish out the mini series and talk about how to use the same principles from the previous two videos to draw imaginary subject matter. In this case, a dragon. So when drawing a dragon like this, we can say that the technique is exactly the same as it was for drawing from reference. We start rough, we refine the rough, and then eventually we slow down, zoom in, and make careful controlled lines. In fact, the second half, the part where we've actually locked down all the details and we're just drawing the final pen line work, that's exactly the same. But it's that first half, the discovery, the design work, that's where things are a lot different. Because with our Komodo dragon, we were working from reference. And so every question ultimately came down to, does my drawing look like the image that I'm basing it off of? Well, without reference, you can't do that. So what I'm doing is I'm combining two different things. I am taking my knowledge of the subject matter. In this case, the subject matter is dragon. And then I am figuring out how to draw it convincingly in 3D space. And that means linear perspective. Now, I know this might be something you associate with drawing train tracks and skyscrapers, but really linear perspective allows you a framework to draw anything realistically. You can just think of linear perspective as the space around us. And in my linear perspective series in the store, I actually talk about a drawing very similar to this one where we draw a T-Rex head and we start with sort of basic primitive forms, which you can understand through linear perspective, and then you wrap realistic details around them. So let's just agree for a second, linear perspective is a necessary prerequisite. It will improve every sort of drawing. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about the other part, which is my understanding of the subject matter. Because a dragon is not real. A dragon is inspired by a variety of things. So my dragon is going to look more believable if I understand what dinosaurs looked like. If I understand the way mammals and reptiles and even fish look. If I understand the way other people paint dragons. I'm going to take those details and sort of remix them into something new, something interesting. So going back to our Komodo dragon example, this is not an accident. I'll often do studies just like this one as sort of a warm up to get my head wrapped around whatever it is I'm trying to design. Because if I need to design a dragon, my imaginary details are going to seem much more interesting or much more possible if I've recently been drawing some realistic real world things. So a reptile looks a lot like what we think of as a dragon. So it's a great way to warm up. And then in the long term big picture, you are going to be sort of squirreling away these little details into your visual library, your sort of mental library, so that you don't always have to warm up with them. So maybe I've done enough studies of reptiles over the years that if I just did a quick sketch of a dragon, my results would pay off. I'd automatically be better at drawing a dragon because I've spent so many hours in the past looking at real world lizards. So in a sense, I'm taking my understanding of stuff, we'll call stuff subject matter, and I'm taking my technical ability to draw things in space, and that's linear perspective. And those two general components allow me to imagine something that didn't exist before. And as I said, really, this is all taking place in the first half of the process. This is my sketch phase. This is where I make big, loose gestural ideas. Some of them work, some of them don't. And then eventually I come to my final design. And then that brings us up to the second half, which you've seen before. We take that, we lock it down, lower the transparency, and then just start painting more specific details. So hopefully this mini-series has made drawing look a little more approachable to you. Yes, of course, the short version is just practice, but I think it is a little more nuanced than that. You can see that getting to a final drawing of a dragon doesn't necessarily happen overnight. It's the final result of a longer process of sort of iteration and learning, doing studies, all these different things. But the very best way to get started is just to do the Komodo dragon. Work from reference, something that you can compare it directly to and work on the process. And then after a number of studies, you might be ready to try that dragon. So good luck, have fun, and thanks for coming to the site.